talking about, man? Hey everybody, this is Harrison with Level 1 Gaming reviewing Black Ops 6's campaign. After the lackluster reception of Modern Warfare 3, Black Ops 6 makes a triumphant return bringing back the high-octane excitement CODs fans crave. With an engaging campaign filled with unique multi-approach missions, dialogue trees, and Bethesda-inspired hacking and lockpicking, Black Ops 6 can keep the gameplay fresh and innovative throughout its 10-hour campaign. What did you find? The crew is back, and this time we take on a super-secret military organization called Pantheon. If you've seen any of the Mission Impossible movies, or any spy thriller, you'll be pretty familiar with this plot. Pantheon is mostly a run-of-the-mill evil organization with a supervillain at the top. While this plot itself doesn't sound too original, Black Ops still delivers every moment with the grandiose that we've come to expect from their campaigns. Going into the campaign mostly blind, I was pretty surprised to see dialogue trees and minigames for game mechanics such as lockpicking and hacking. The dialogue trees here don't seem to impact the story in any meaningful way. They're just a way for you to, you know, jabber with your uh, companions between missions. But they do go a long way in making you feel like an actual person in the crew and not just a silent protagonist, even though you are. Many of the missions here on offer are typical COD fare, but there are quite a few standouts. One such standout mission is a free roam sandbox. Yes, we saw these in Modern Warfare 3, however in Black Ops 6 they're handled with much more precision. In one mission, for example, you have to assist a British special unit. Presented with three simple objectives. Destroy three scud launchers. However, each launcher is located in a different area on the map, and between each of them is filled with a ton of side missions and numerous points of interest. Completing side missions can provide support during both the current mission and the following one, such as mortar or airstrikes, which have come extremely helpful later on. A really cool gameplay mechanic here is that whatever you unlock in this part of the mission, you carry with you to the next section. So when you assault the palace, if you unlock the uh, helicopter gunner seat in the last part, you bring that and can use that on the next mission. It's a really cool mechanic and I'm glad to see that they expanded that here. While Modern Warfare 3 seemingly haphazardly placed players in a war zone style maps filled with mindless AI and repetitive objectives. Free roam missions here feel much more handcrafted and purposeful. Enemies have patrol routes and there are numerous outposts to destroy. And how you choose to approach each scenario is entirely up to you. Will you snipe everyone from a nearby mountain? Will you airstrike everything into oblivion? Or will you stealthily plant a bomb and escape undetected? These choices add freedom and depth to the gameplay. And without giving too much away, another level that's one of my favorites is an eerie mission that's perfectly themed and timed for Halloween. While another main level takes inspiration from an Ocean's Eleven heist style movie. Here each team member has a role in the heist and players switch between characters to complete tasks like smuggling weapons or disabling security. One more mission for example draws heavily from Hitman of all things, where the player is disguised as an enemy soldier and they infiltrate a base. And there's restricted areas during there, you can do dialogue options to convince people to do other things, and you can set traps again that carry over to the next gameplay section. So when you then assault the base with the rest of your team, all those traps that you place will go off, or all the C4 that you planted then you can then explode if a tank or something rolls over it. Again, this is a really solid mechanic, and I hope that they expand on this in future CODs. Throughout the game, the camaraderie within your team strengthens. While this is expected, it's pulled off here with ease. Each character is impressively detailed with excellent animation and voice acting that rivals Hollywood productions. And overall, anybody that likes Mission Impossible, James Bond, or Ocean's Eleven style movies, you're going to really like this plot here. I do have a couple qualms with the campaign as a whole. One is sometimes how fast it jumps between missions without fully explaining why you're going there until you get there. Yes, there are pre-mission briefings, um, but sometimes they don't do a great job, in my opinion. Along with that, the game unfortunately does suffer from some uneven AI regarding stealth. Unfortunately, this is a game that if one enemy sees you, all the enemies can magically see you through the walls and will chase you until you're dead. Even if you go on an airstrike from 500 yards away, all the enemies will instantly turn and start firing at you. This is a disappointing blemish in an otherwise awesome game. During that free roam mission I spoke about earlier, there was tons of times that I would snipe on from a mountaintop or call on airstrikes and every single time, I was just so disappointed that even if I called in an airstrike and hid behind something and laid down, people still knew where I was. In combat, however, enemies are extremely aggressive and will push and flank your position, which is great. I only wish the same attention had been given to the stealth sections, as they are decently fleshed out, such as you can hide bodies in closets. 
My final gripe is that your friendly AI is totally worthless. They miss 95% of their shots. And if they manage to hit somebody, the damage they deal seems to be extremely reduced. Sure, this game is a power fantasy, but there were quite a few situations where I turned to face the enemy that's shooting me in the back. And I see all five of my teammates shooting back at the person that is three feet away from them and they're just missing every single shot. The mechanics we all know and love are on full display here. The quote, new mechanic is the omnidirectional movement system. Did you love dolphin diving in the classic Black Ops or having tons of people dolphin dive at you and kill you? Well, boy, howdy, you're going to have a great time here. You're now able to sprint in any direction, along with being able to dolphin dive in any direction. I never found much of a reason to use this in campaign, but I'm sure in multiplayer this will be fully utilized against me. Another new aspect of the gameplay is that a decent chunk of the game is spent with your crew at your hideout after each mission. This hideout, which is a lavish house in Ukraine, feels like it could be listed for $1,400 a night on Airbnb. And as you progress, you collect money during missions that you can use to buy upgrades like increased health or faster sprinting in the training area. You can get a gear station where you unlock, you know, being able to reload faster, being able to carry more armor. And I did enjoy this, but I did miss being able to customize my own gun to take it into battle. And I did really enjoy that there are Easter eggs, puzzles, and riddles to solve at the hideout. But I do wish there was some more gameplay put into the house, as the house has a lot of unused space. There's like 18 bedrooms in the thing, and you never have to go in any of them, but like two. And for example, you have a shooting range there, but you're not able to use the shooting range between missions, like you can't use a gun. She seems a little odd, and I wish that they would have put more of a training area or something to do at the game there. How big are the booms in Black Ops 6? The booms here are the biggest and best booms you'll hear all year. Every minuscule noise in the game is spot on and serves to immerse you in the world. Gunshots are chunky and will echo based on the environment around you. Even the act of jumping over a desk, swishing the papers off of it results in a surprisingly pleasant noise that you'd miss because it just sounds so natural. In addition, all the characters are acted and voice acted just as well as any major Hollywood movie. You know, for the graphics from the sunlight glinting off a character's glasses to seeing the dust particles as the early morning sunlight rolls through a window, Black Ops 6 is a spectacular looking game. The soundtrack here especially, I really didn't expect to love as much as I did. I found myself in multiple scenarios just blankly staring into the sunset or a wall for a few minutes as I grooved out to the music. The soundtrack is mostly heavy rock with some cultural themes sprinkled in depending on the location, but it always fits and always feels grand and epic. All in all, it's a Call of Duty game. Black Ops 6 is everything I look for in a COD game. The big explosions, cinematic action, and satisfying gunplay. And here it delivers in every way, and goes even further, with offering players real choice in how they tackle missions. From the spy thriller plot, stunning graphics, to bombastic gunplay, the Black Ops 6 campaign alone is well worth the price of the game. Alright folks, thanks for listening. Again, my name is Harrison or Purgo one with Level 1 Gaming. Keep like and subscribe and I'll get a zombies review out soon. Thanks for watching. Bye. We'll finalize plans soon and we'll ship out. This minute.